Um, okay, we we're moving we're moving to a different phase. We have uh, Carlos, who has been Carlos Braguer, Professor Carlos Braguer. He's been kind enough to get up very early in the morning for us. I really appreciate <laughs> him taking the do, doing this for us because it is actually quite early over there in, in, in Europe. Uh, Carlos is actually a food professor in the University Carlos Tercero de Madrid. This is, um, is one of the top universities in Spain and I would say actually in, in Europe too. Um, he, his, um, his research includes humanoids and assistive devices, although he, today he's also going to tell us about his, his extensive work in, in the space of uh, tunneling inspection, quite a lot of developments there. Um, he has actually been, um, well, he's been doing projects for as long as I can remember. <laughs> he's been actually doing this since 19, his, his initial projects with the U European frameworks uh, was dates from 1989, that, that's the, the original Eureka ones, that's a long time ago. Um, but he, since then he's constantly uh, doing projects in, in the space of the framework seven and framework uh, six and seven. Uh, he's published more than 200 papers in journals and various books. So I think we're very fortunate to actually have him talking to us about the work that he's been doing in the space of uh, tunneling inspection in particular. So which, uh, without further ado, I'd like to welcome Carlos and uh, give it over to you, basically. Thanks, Carlos. Good morning. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Jaime, for the introduction. Uh, good uh, evening in Sydney and early morning in, in Madrid. Um, I will share uh, my screen. Um, yeah, we can see your. And here is my presentation. Do you see it? It's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you. Okay. Well. Um, First of all, thanks for uh, organizer for thanks uh, Dikai, uh, Jaime, and also Andrew and, and Soshana to organize this interesting intercontinental uh, uh, workshop in uh, this uh, topic. Uh, well, I I I will present um, our experience um, in uh, University Carlos III. Uh, about uh, our uh, project in uh, tunnel uh, uh, inspection and maintains. Uh, we perform uh, a lot of um, um, projects, including big European ones, uh, in construction in general, uh, but I will focus uh, in my presentation here uh, in uh, transportation tunnels, okay? Uh, this is an index of my presentation. I will, I will make a brief introduction and, and, and some class of uh, classification. And then I will uh, focus in my last two European projects, uh, Tung Construct and RoboSpec. Uh, both of them are um, a big project with a lot of partners. And our role in this project was um, the uh, robot control, robot uh, perception, uh, robot uh, motion, uh, navigation, etc. Uh, why uh, we are focusing in uh, in tunnels, in transportation tunnels, maybe? Well, uh, Europe is one of the dense uh, place in the world. Uh, of transportation tunnels. Uh, there are a lot of uh, tunnels uh, uh, through uh, European countries, and uh, most of them are um, uh, tunnels uh, that uh, build uh, 50, 60, and some of them uh, 100 years. And they need a very um, uh, um, uh, careful uh, inspection and maintain. Uh, these tunnels are very, very long, commonly uh, several kilometers. Some of them uh, has uh, tens of kilometers. And this is a very large uh, structure. Uh, commonly, transportation tunnels have four 
four lines of, of, of motion of cars. And it means the diameter is about 10 or 12 meters. It's a very long and very huge uh, infrastructure. It's uh, located um, in very uh, inaccessible uh, areas, uh, mountain areas, and uh, the access sometimes is dangerous uh, if we are not uh, in the car. Uh, the inspection is very ruled. It means uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, regulations, um, uh, European regulation, uh, each country has their own uh, regulation also, and um, it's necessary uh, to make it in periodical uh, uh, point of view. It means every uh, month or years we need to, to check uh, a lot of a lot of it. And um, sometimes uh, this inspection and maintains uh, need to stop the traffic. And this is a big uh, uh, disadvantage uh, because when you stop the traffic in these transportation tunnels, it means you need to use uh, alternative uh, ways to reach the places, uh, very uh, dangerous mountain uh, roads. And it's a, a very big um, a problem for a local economy. And of course, uh, human factors are also is uh, very important. Um, nowadays, uh, inspection is, uh, I, I can say, 90% uh, manual. It means uh, it's not uh, 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 clear uh, if uh, it is a good or not so good uh, inspection. And this is why we want to introduce some kind of uh, uh, robotics um, uh, inspection, automatic ins inspection, that will uh, lead to um, more precise uh, data and more precise uh, procedure. Uh, as I uh, told you, uh, this civil infrastructure are very aging. Um, we not only want to make a periodical inspection, but also want um, to know what is happened with these uh, tunnels in the uh, structural point of view. It means we need to have an assessment of uh, the uh, stability of the tunnel, the situation of the tunnel, and this is a, a, a step uh, towards uh, new data and new uh, way to uh, maintain civil infra infrastructure. Uh, also, uh, we want to reduce the number of workers that are working in this environment, uh, because this is really a very dangerous uh, um, work. And, uh, of course, uh, the, the main tool today is the developing of the uh, autonomous uh, intelligent robotic system that uh, try to make uh, most of this kind of uh, inspection. Uh, focusing in the European Union, uh, in the last uh, uh, research uh, and development framework, uh, Horizon 2020, that finished the last year, uh, infrastructure and inspection is one of the key uh, robotics area. Uh, European Union uh, defined four the key uh, robotics area, uh, healthcare, uh, agri-food, uh, agile production for uh, SMEs, and uh, in, uh, infrastructure inspection and maintenance. Uh, during the period 2018-20, uh, uh, the budget was about 150 million euros for uh, uh, research uh, in this to to topic, uh, but not only a basic research, but a, a very uh, applying research. And the European Commission uh, uh, budgeting uh, project in the TRL level uh, four or five. It means this is a 
uh, systems, robotic systems that are working in real environment. Uh, of course, it's not a final product, but it's very uh, uh, developed and very mature uh, uh, system. In the new uh, Horizon uh, um, Europe uh, project, uh, this investment will be double. It means the uh, European Commission is uh, very care about uh, this kind of uh, inspection. Of course, it's not only the voting of inspection in uh, construction, uh, in uh, transportation tunnels, uh, also uh, bridges, uh, buildings, uh, uh, special uh, uh, infrastructure, etc. But uh, transportation tunnels is uh, most, uh, uh, from my point of view, most difficult uh, system for uh, inspection. Uh, this is a brief um, uh, picture about uh, what we want to 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 inspect. Uh, of course, uh, we want to inspect uh, uh, pavement, uh, uh, walls, um, some kind of uh, rails if if it uh, uh, exists, and um, uh, tunnels, transportation tunnels are uh, very um, uh, intensively used. Uh, uh, thousands and millions of cars uh, go uh, uh, from these tunnels. And uh, what is important, not, not, not only uh, cars, but also uh, trucks. Um, transportation in Europe by road is very, very important. And there are a lot of very big uh, trucks um, uh, circulated through these tunnels. This is why we need to have a very clear uh, understanding what is happening. <clears throat> uh, but also, it's the, the voting with the, with the mining. Uh, a lot of um, mining galleries, it's uh, very similar to, to transportation tunnels. Uh, and so also, we have another project that are trying to inspect the mining infrastructure. Uh, first of all, uh, um, to avoid uh, collapsing of this tunnel, but also to to understand and to inspect the 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 quality and uh, uh, assessment of this tunnel. I will not uh, focusing in this presentation in, in mining, but some of the techniques that I will present, uh, we also use in other projects in mining uh, environment. Well, this is, this is the picture of the past. Uh, this is a picture of the very uh, uh, mechanical uh, system for uh, inspection. Uh, this is for the um, uh, railroad uh, tunnels. Uh, from uh, the past centuries, uh, and and this is the 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 starting point. What uh, was done in the past, uh, but nowadays we have several uh, robotic devices that are very uh, efficient in some kind of uh, of uh, tunnels. Uh, in this uh, slide, we have uh, the RoboSpec um, uh, project that I will uh, uh, describe later. Uh, this is uh, uh, for uh, big transportation tunnels, especially for walls, for uh, concrete walls. Uh, in the second picture, we have uh, autonomous robot for pavement inspection with GeoRadar, for example, to to understand uh, what is the uh, pavement quality. Uh, we have also uh, robots uh, that have the ability to climb, uh, climb on the ceiling, uh, climb on the uh, complex uh, um, uh, environment. And also uh, there are several projects in this area. And and finally, now it's uh, very popular uh, using the UAVs, drones. Uh, UAVs um, are very pop popular. Uh, it's a very cheap solution for, for inspection. 
How, however, uh, our experience is that uh, UAV ha um, have uh, uh, several uh, drawbacks. Uh, first, first of all, um, when you want to use UAV uh, with the running cars, uh, there are a big uh, uh, air um, air uh, motions there are, uh, that uh, make that this uh, uh, flying will be not uh, stable. Uh, this uh, uh, influence of the running cars makes that uh, UAV's uh, application is not so easy uh, in the real environment with the running cars and uh, also um, in the uh, tunnels that have some kind of uh, leaking or what. Uh, in any case, this is a brief, um, the brief overview of, of different technologies of robotics, uh, from robotic manipulator, mobile robot, landing robot, UAVs, that can be applied in an uh, inspection of transportation tunnels. I make a short classification um, which kind of robot is better uh, for which uh, kind of um, uh, applications. Uh, here you see uh, in this table uh, uh, different type of robots, manipulator, mobile robot, mobile manipulator, climbing, etc. And uh, of course we have uh, advantage is this a this a disadvantage. Uh, in our case, uh, as you will see later, uh, we're moving for mobile manipulator. Uh, mobile manipulator has an excellent uh, uh, manipulation and locomotion um, capabilities, but uh, the main disadvantage is uh, heavy, heavy. It's a very heavy uh, system, uh, uh, but also. Uh, we need to be very care on the control. It's a complex uh, system with uh, a lot of degrees of freedom, a lot of uh, uh, perception uh, and positioning system, and, and we need to be very care about the uh, control architecture. This is the other um, classification. This is by infrastructure. Um, uh, we classify uh, infrastructure, uh, but also um, the material uh, of this infrastructure. We have uh, asphalt, we have uh, steel, uh, concrete, bricks, uh, etc. Uh, it means how we will uh, manage these kinds of uh, robotics uh, system for different applications. Uh, in different tunnels with different uh, materials. It is, it is also a very uh, important uh, issue. Uh, in the case of tunnels, uh, most of them are concrete or, or brick. Uh, most of them are uh, cir circular shape. And uh, mobile manipulator or climbing manipulator is the most uh, suitable uh, from our point of view uh, for this uh, inspection. Well, uh, what is happen in transportation tunnels? As I told you, it's, it's a critical uh, infra infrastructure. It's important social and um, economical uh, effects if we close it and need a periodical and very methodical inspection. And of course, there are a lot of high risk in this problem, I will I will show you a video of collapsing of this of this kind of tunnels, uh, collapsing not only during the construction but during the um, uh, uh, common uh, using, and of course this collapsing uh, will uh, have a very very uh, dangerous. Um, uh, situation uh, and uh, for example um, the last uh, collapsing in the Swiss uh, uh, tunnel <coughs> uh, five or six years ago uh, has a catastrophic influence 
uh, in all the region and also uh, several uh, injuries, etc. It means we need to be very care in this kind of inspection of these uh, systems. Uh, how uh, this inspection is performing nowadays? Well, the, the three main keywords is the manual, subjective, and dangerous. You can see in, in the next video how it's uh, performing now. You see it is a very uh, primitive uh, scaffolders, uh, uh, cranes, uh, uh, sometimes uh, trucks, uh, but uh, this inspection is highly, highly manual. Uh, of course, these worker are uh, has a good uh, specialization, but uh, now it is not easy to to really uh, uh, found this this kind of uh, expert, and uh, this is why sometimes this inspection is performed by not uh, training uh, person. Uh, it means uh, we need to avoid this uh, subjective. Uh, kind of inspection and goes to, to of course, a more uh, objective one. What is, we, uh, what is we are looking for? Well, there are a lot of uh, possible uh, defects in the, uh, especially in the uh, concrete uh, uh, tunnels. Uh, uh, here, in, in this uh, slide, I present uh, four more common. Uh, this is a picture first uh, of uh, spalling. This is some kind of uh, spalling that can be um, uh, of a big uh, area or small uh, kind of spalling. Uh, how, however, uh, spallings in general are not a critical um, uh, defects and we need to detect them, but it's not very critical. What is most uh, critical uh, uh, in the concrete tunnels is the cracks. Uh, here in the second picture, we see the crack. The crack um, can be uh, very short or, or very long, so several meters. And the problem that cracks are very small. The width can be from se several millimeters to several uh, centimeters, but it's very, very uh, small cracks. And some cracks are only um, a su superficial one. It's not a problem with these superficial cracks, but if this crack is deep inside the concrete uh, uh, tunnel, it means we can have some uh, structural problem. It means we not uh, need to look for the crack, but also for the propagation of this crack inside of the tunnel. And this is complex uh, operation. Also, we have a, a fluorescence. It means we have some kind of uh, leaking, uh, watering, etc. It's also important to detect. And uh, discoloration, uh, mainly um, uh, it's uh, because uh, watering, of course, but also pollution um, for quality of uh, material. It's, it means there are four more common defects that our robotic system want to detect and uh, inspect. Uh, but uh, in the most of time, we will focus in on cracks. As I announced, uh, I will uh, present you two European projects that we actively um, uh, participated in, in the past. Uh, the last one, Robo Inspect, was uh, finished uh, one and a half year only. Uh, it's a big, uh, both, both of them, it's a, uh, they are a big project, um, uh, about three, four million euros, uh, with a multinational. A consortium uh, from different countries, uh, different uh, technical fields, uh, 
researchers in different areas, from uh, robotics, of course, but also from uh, civil engineering. And what is important, uh, in both projects, we have uh, 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 end users, end users uh, companies, companies that um, uh, are owners of, of the channels or the companies that has the permission for inspection. But in any case, uh, this is an uh, end user in this domain that uh, was very uh, important. Uh, it was very important to have this kind of companies in the construction. I will start with the first uh, project, EU Construct. The main idea of this project is uh, to repair, repair cracks. Uh, 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 in this project, we starting by uh, uh, manual uh, identification of where we have the cracks, and uh, the robotic systems goes to this uh, uh, crack and then automatically make a, a repair process. Uh, how uh, repair on the fly? Uh, this kind of cracks? Well, uh, we are looking for how they make it manually. And the manual operation is very, very easy. Uh, they detect the crack and then put uh, fiber reinforced plastic uh, strips in perpendicular uh, direction of this crack. It's like a, a, a reinforce this, this crack by a number of these uh, strips, and you can uh, glue in this strip to the uh, 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 concrete uh, wall uh, by a special, sorry, sorry, by a, a special uh, Sika. Uh, Sika is a, a, a Switzerland uh, company. Uh, leader in uh, re, uh, resins and MC. Uh, this is uh, the idea. Uh, identify manually the cracks and by robotic system uh, uh, identify uh, the position and orientation of the crack and uh, attach these kind of strips. For that, uh, we develop uh, this uh, system. This is a, 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 a van. Uh, this is a manually driving on van. And uh, in the van, we have a small uh, crate. In the uh, top of the crate, we have the robot, uh, robot uh, controller, but also the robot sensor and robot tools. This is the, uh, the uh, picture. Uh, of the system. Uh, as the robot, we use uh, PA10 Mitsubishi 1, and uh, the sensor, and, and especially the, the maintenance tool, uh, were developed by ourselves. Well, uh, one of the main uh, output of this project uh, was the development of this automatic tool. Uh, this is a tool that we uh, patenting and um, tool uh, make all the necessary operation for this maintenance. Uh, first of all, tool uh, has the uh, video camera uh, that uh, identify exact position because as I told you, the cracks uh, can be uh, of some millimeters uh, 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 width, and it is uh, necessary to clearly ident identify where is the position in and, and geometry uh, of this of this uh, crack. And and don't uh, forget, this is a 3D. This is not uh, plain walls. Uh, the walls uh, has uh, any. Uh, possible uh, geometry. Uh, then we have a uh, uh, place for a resin uh, cartridge that will uh, 
gluing these uh, strips. And uh, then we have uh, the uh, carbon fiber roll and also the cutting system to, to cut this uh, continuous carbon fiber roll in a small strips. Okay, this is the, uh, the uh, system that we develop after uh, first two pro prototype and, the, and this is final uh, working uh, tool. Uh, in this uh, slide, uh, we see um, how we uh, perform the process. Uh, this is a picture of uh, HMI, the human machine interface. And uh, we, we detect in the first one, we detect the plaques. Then uh, we uh, uh, select the special uh, via points, these red points, via points. Then we uh, make a calculation to uh, obtain uh, a continuous like uh, uh, spline uh, path. And then we calculate uh, the position of these uh, uh, cracks in the normal direction uh, perpendicular to the points of application in these uh, splines. This is the SOAR um, uh, tool. And then uh, we need to uh, implement this uh, in the real tunnel uh, with the real uh, HMI. Uh, HMI need to be very, very friendly because uh, the, the users are uh, low or medium uh, uh, skills uh, 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 workers. And uh, we have a special menu for experts, but this is the general view of HMI for uh, final users. Um, imagine uh, this is a real uh, inspection, real field, field test in the Berliner Tunnel in, in the north of, of Spain. Uh, the tunnel is 6.8 meters, it's a, it's a big tunnel. And in red, this is the uh, robot reach uh, zone. The, the robot has the uh, reaching area of about uh, 1.5, 1.6 meter. It means we will move the crane uh, near the necessary point and then uh, adjust the position of the volume. Of this is the entry uh, point of the tunnel and this is uh, the uh, operation. I will uh, running now the video of, um, of this uh, uh, real uh, inspection. As you see, the robotic tools first try to identify exactly where is the uh, crack. And then uh, very slowly try to touch the wall. Uh, touch the wall with, with so big uh, systems. Uh, it's not a, it's not an easy uh, operation. Uh, you need to control also the position, but but mainly forces of touching the robot the wall. Okay. When we identify, as you can see, uh, the position and orientation of the crack and the and the forces of the robot over the wall, we perform. Uh, operation of following this kind of uh, this kind of uh, surface. Uh, first of all, we gluing it. It's uh, this you can see this uh, white uh, gluing, and in the same time, we are cutting the uh, carbon uh, uh, carbon fiber uh, strips. And uh, we are attaching, uh, increasing the force of the robot <coughs> over the wall. And this operation um, is very fast, uh, comparing with the operation of the manual um, uh, operators. And uh, the results are very, very nice. 
uh, this uh, kind of quality of gluing and attachment is uh, in general, in average, uh, uh, equal or sometimes it's uh, higher than performed by manual uh, operators. Okay. Uh, of course, this is a, a prototype of, of the robot. Uh, robot the system need to be uh, improved, but this uh, real application, real uh, channels uh, are very uh, uh, was was very important, and demonstrate that uh, these technologies are very useful for this kind of maintenance in transportation uh, computers. Well, uh, when we finish this project, we are moving to a new one. Uh, RoboSpec uh, is a, a project that I told you we are finished about uh, one year, one and a half year ago. And uh, the objective of this second project is uh, not maintained, but identify where are the cracks. Uh, because uh, if we solve the, the maintains, uh, there are different kinds of maintains. Uh, we're using uh, uh, carbon fiber scripts. But uh, if we know how to, to repair the uh, tunnel, uh, first, we need to identify where is the crack. And if the tunnels are very big, for example, for tunnels of uh, 10 or 12 meter diameters, we need to um, develop the new kind of technology. Imagine in this kind of tunnels of 12 meter diameter, uh, you need to search uh, for uh, cracks of uh, uh, five millimeters and uh, and ten centimeters long. Well, it's it's not easy uh, situation, it's not easy process, and uh, you need to really uh, understand uh, how to uh, in a very fast manner to try to identify these cracks. And the other objective of this project is to try the identification of this crack without stopping the traffic. It means we not stop the traffic. You will see in the next videos uh, running traffic and uh, the work uh, of the robot is in part. This is the configuration of a developed system. It's based in three main um, parts. Uh, you see vehicle. This is an autonomous vehicle, uh, moving uh, totally uh, autonomous. The second part is a crane. It's a, a controlling autonomous crane. Uh, due to the fact that this crane is very long, about 10 meters, uh, the, the crane has deflection, of course, at the, at, at the end. And um, at this uh, flexion, we need to calculate flexion and uh, compensate. And finally, the third part is a, is a um, robotic intelligent uh, system in the tip. And with this robot, we have a lot of sensor. I will describe it later, uh, which kind of sensor, and also a processing unit. Not only the, the robot control unit, but unit for processing uh, vision information, uh, ultrasound information, etc. In any, in any case, uh, we have three main parts, robot, brain, and vehicle. Uh, this is a multi degrees of freedom system, complex system in real environment. And the target of this project was to control successfully this. The idea of the process is uh, that we use several kinds of sensors. Uh, some sensor located in the mobile uh, platform, it's for navigation, but also for crack detection. We have a sensor in, for crack detection 
in the mobile uh, platform, but also in the in the in the robotic system, uh, and uh, to make um, a fast uh, detection of these um, tracks, we perform uh, offline the uh, learning um, um, intelligent algorithm. It means uh, we um, took uh, hundreds and, and thousands of pictures and then uh, performing uh, machine learning and deep learning uh, algorithms, we um, um, adjust the parameters of our uh, vision and, la and, and laser system to understand where <coughs> the track can be uh, uh, positioned, located. It means <coughs> with this first uh, inspection, we determine uh, if crack is exist or not exist. We don't know if the crack is critical or not. This is the second step. But with the uh, a sensor uh, that are positioning on the mobile platform mainly, uh, we know uh, uh, where to look in, in more detail. And when we detect the position of this possible crack, we uh, move with the crane, with the robot to this position, and then we make fine uh, inspection and fine detection of these uh, the cracks. It means the process is in two steps. Uh, uh, first of all, uh, general uh, identification and then fine uh, refinement of this uh, identification. Uh, the uh, mobile platform, as I told you, has a, a navigation, for example, navigation lasers, um, of course, a lighting system, because the illumination on the tunnels is not uh, uniform. Uh, also, we have a navigation camera, a 3D laser profile, and a crack detection cameras. In the part of the robot, uh, we have a robotic arm, uh, and robotic arm has in the tip uh, a vision system, and also a ultrasound system, uh, also laser for uh, collaborate uh, vision laser and to perform more uh, um, precise uh, system. And here we will also have a, a 4D uh, cameras, uh, high resolution cameras, okay? Uh, the process of inspection is, uh, we are, uh, is, uh, is, is this following and, and it, it's, um, um, it's formed by three steps. Uh, we uh, investigate in different kind of processes, but uh, finally we decided this is the most uh, suitable, optimal process. Uh, the, the robot uh, stops in one point and then perform this kind of slice inspection uh, over uh, this uh, uh, cylindrical uh, or uh, uh, circular uh, walls. When we detect or when we uh, presume that we detect some kind of uh, cracks, uh, we are moving near this crack and then we uh, make a um, fine inspection. I will show the, the video. This is the video of, um, of a simulation of, of the process. We are just uh, several uh, uh, processes and several kind of uh, approaches. And here is the, the selected one. You can see that we identify uh, the crack, the robot is moving, and when we detect the crack, we uh, go very close to this crack, and sometimes we need to, to touch the wall. 
uh, I, I repeat that touching the wall um, with so big system is not, um, is not easy uh, work uh, because it's a uh, very uh, multi degrees of level uh, system and we need to care to, to touch with a precise uh, force, precise uh, torque in different axes and uh, not damage uh, the system. Well, uh, about the navigation, I will show you also another video for the, for the vehicle navigation. This is the autonomous uh, navigation, uh, not, not inside the tunnel, I will show you later inside the tunnel, but this is the um, de debugging of the navigation system. We use uh, a SLAM uh, approach. Uh, you see here the, the uh, reference uh, points. And this is the, uh, here you see the, some uh, reference point for this, for this navigation. And we use a common uh, SLAM uh, technique uh, using a, a ROS uh, software. And um, this is the um, standard ROS uh, visualization. Uh, the, the vehicle is, is very heavy, it's very big. Uh, how, however, the velocity is okay for the inspection, for the uh, on-the-fly inspection, it's, it's enough. Uh, and uh, also the, the quality of the path is very nice. We have only a few uh, oscillations. And we check, of course, in the straight line motion and also in the in the, in the What is an uh, important issue here is how we uh, orient the uh, robot sensors, especially uh, during the wall touching. Uh, uh, for this purpose, we develop a special uh, algorithm. And I will show you two videos. This is a video in the lab. Uh, how, to, how to adapt the robot in the perpendicular uh, orientation to the wall. We have unknown wall, unknown orientation of the wall, and by touching, by touching in, in four different points, we position the robot in automatic way in the normal direction to the surface. It is very important uh, because uh, this, if the sensors are not in the normal direction, the measurement of especially ultrasonic sensor will be not good. Uh, in the second video here, uh, we can see the same uh, application, but using a, a camera and lasers uh, that we install in the tip of the robot. And we perform a 3D, a 3D map of this uh, surface, creating a, a point cloud that we store in our database for future uh, analysis, okay? Uh, it is very important to make this uh, 3D mapping to understand the uh, structural situation and assessment of this tunnel, if the tunnel uh, has some kind of, um, of deformation or some kind of uh, uh, error, in, in general geometry. And here, uh, after this 3D mapping, you see these green points. These green points are ultrasound sensor that need to touch the surface with a specific force to uh, uh, pro propagate ultrasound sensors through the uh, material. And the second 
is the receipt. It means uh, it is very important uh, to be good oriented in the normal direction and mapping the environment to know what is happening with this price. From a cultural architecture point of view, this is the main uh, scheme. Uh, uh, we have uh, two parts. This is a, a, a system that embodied in the robotic system. And this is a in green uh, system that are in, uh, in the uh, ground uh, uh, control uh, station. Uh, 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 this is the ground control system, uh, which uh, define the mission which kind of mission, for example, missions to uh, moving uh, one kilometer and uh, only inspect the uh, left part of the channel or, or ceiling or, or something like this. This is the mission manager that also has a database for data uh, storage. Uh, on the robot side, we have a vehicle and crane. They have their own uh, control system, robotic arm also control system, vision cameras and laser profiles, uh, they also has a, they are a control system and ultrasonic sensor. The main problem to make the integration of this uh, kind of uh, system is we have a lot of uh, control system running in the different uh, operating system with a different interfacing and the the integration is not easy uh, you can see here uh, some uh, systems are running in in linux and c plus plus other windows other we use python uh, well uh, mm, this is a lot of uh, different uh, control systems uh, operating system, etc. Uh, we mainly use uh, ROS plugins for 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 uh, vehicle control and uh, for uh, mission manager uh, communication, but also use very efficient YAR uh, communication and uh, middleware protocol for uh, uh, robotic car, vision cameras, and ultrasonics. It means integration is a very very key. Uh, issue in this kind of uh, robotic system. The other uh, critical situation is uh, the uh, oscillation the, uh, of this kind of uh, big and heavy uh, robotic system. Uh, we need to know uh, how they oscillate. We need to know uh, errors. Uh, Statical errors in the tips, uh, and for this we perform a lot of um, uh, experiments, and then create a, a database uh, with this kind of uh, maximum or average uh, oscillation, also with um, uh, maximum and average uh, errors, and uh, we uh, compensate this oscillation and these errors. Uh, for different uh, position and, and orientation of the, of the robot in order to have very precise positioning of a very uh, big and long structure. Uh, precision of positioning is a very uh, challenging issue. We uh, develop a special uh, system that trying to uh, uh, compensate uh, possible errors in this kind of uh, system. Uh, if we make an easy calculation, the, the cumulative error uh, of all the systems are about 11 centimeters. It's, it's so high. It's uh, not possible to really position the robot um over the crack with this kind of error. What we can do, uh, we uh, 
position the robot, uh, first of all, uh, in, two, in two different points, in two uh, scanning positions, okay? Make the measurements, and then we uh, perform a course uh, approximation to the uh, wall, and then find adjustment and elimination of the errors by the uh, uh, sensor installed uh, in the tip of the rope. In this way, we reduce the theoretical error of 11 centimeters for uh, less than one centimeter. In this last picture, you can see uh, the, the, the crack in the ultrasonic sensor, and, and uh, we are uh, measured this crack with the resolution of less than one centimeter. It means uh, how you um, reduce the error of big system, uh, dynamically uh, uh, heavy system. It's also was one of the objective of this project. Um, about the structural uh, assessment. Uh, uh, structural uh, assessment, uh, when we are moving through the tunnel, we obtain all the data, uh, all the geometrical data, classify this data in the different parts, walls, ceiling, pavement, etc. And uh, also classify where we uh, found uh, cracks, leakings, or other kind of uh, defects, and if these defects are critical or not. Okay, uh, and all these system are mapping in the uh, assessment database that then will be analyzed by uh, structural engineers. This is the uh, interface. This is the general interface of, of robust uh, system. It has a lot of layers. I will not um, explain all of, all, of, all, of, all of them, but uh, for example, in the structural assessment so what, uh, you, you have this data, geometrical data of the whole the tunnel, and, and this is the files to, to store all the, all the data. And the second um, uh, window, we, we have uh, uh, control of, of, of the robotic uh, system. In the third window, we have some uh, errors of uh, positioning and uh, oscillation and some uh, statistics. It means we have a lot of uh, windows in, in uh, HMI that uh, gives you uh, several uh, kind of information depends on what you are uh, looking. Uh, this is the main uh, uh, human machine interface for mission planner. Uh, as uh, we discussed, uh, the mission of the robot is inspect. Uh, inspect uh, all the channel or only one part of the wall or ceiling or a uh, pub. It means uh, we, we can select and plan what we want to inspect. We have a lot of, for example, uh, sliders here. This is the red sliders. And we are uh, define uh, uh, velocity, time, uh, well, a lot of technical parameters. Yeah? Uh, also here, we have the files uh, for both the, the, the mission and the results of this uh, mission, of course, and, and, we, and we can select them. It is, it is very important <clears throat> to um, um, storage the data in a, in a good way uh, because uh, if you will back to this tunnel uh, the next year, you can able to compare the data that you obtained <clears throat> the previous year <coughs> with the uh, uh, nowadays uh, inspection. It means we are uh, performing not only um, uh, data for, for this inspection, but as an uh, historical data to identify if 
the channel has some uh, structural uh, uh, deformation or if the number of cracks or, or uh, waterings are increased, etc., etc. It means we make by this analysis a uh, very uh, important, um, uh, very important uh, conclusion of uh, dynamic situation of this. Uh, data management. Uh, Hi, Carlos. Uh, Carlos? Yeah. Yes, yeah. I mean, yes. Sorry to interrupt, but I'm, I'm just wondering whether you think that you get many more slides because um, we're kind of running out of time. No, no, I, 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 I have only a couple of them. Okay? okay, thanks. Thanks for that. Yeah, cheers. Uh, this is a, this is a, a data, data management system that most of all I, I describe from different uh, sensor, vision, laser. Etc. This is the cracks that we are, uh, that we are, um, Looking, this is the manual uh, inspection of this of this crack, and this is a real uh, inspection. For example, of the ceiling, you can see that the robots are moving. They and also the traffic and cars are running and this is absolutely in parallel this is absolutely in parallel uh, inspection and we don't close the uh, traffic is the orientation of the robot this is an example of orientation of the robot this is an example of robot motion And now I will show you uh, the video of real detection of the crack. And how we touch this poor surface. And in this uh, touching position, we perform uh, ultrasonic inspection with, two, with these two green uh, emitters and receivers. We need to locate the sensor in the wall, then make a pressure, the pressure of the sensor, and analyze the ultrasound waves. Okay? Here we need to have a very good precision. It's a video of really precision with this nail in the middle of, of two uh, sensors. How we are moving to this track with a very high precision. Okay. Well, conclusions. Uh, robotic inspection and maintains is a very important topic for companies, end users, citizens, funding organization, and it's very, very important. With this technology, with this robotic system, we can move for a periodical inspection and maintenance. It means not perform a periodical, but a periodical that will uh, optimize the resources uh, and create a new industrial paradigm a periodical inspection. The main uh, drawbacks, no standards for uh, robotic inspection system. And we need to develop this kind of standards uh, with the uh, authorities. And finally, uh, I show you a different uh, application and two projects with uh, um, mobile manipulators, mobile platform, train, and robot, but can we move for most multi-robot system? In my personal uh, opinion, we need to move for the multi-robot uh, system. It's not only one kind of robot, but uh, the um, complex 
uh, system with different robots for different application and different um, tasks. And this is what I want to, to say to you today. Thanks very much. And sorry for being a little bit long. Thanks, Carlos. Thanks very much. All righty. Well, that was that was very interesting, actually. I um, we don't, as far as I know, we don't really have done. We haven't really done much work ourselves in in the space of of tunnels. So I think that's actually uh, very very interesting myself. Um, I, I do have a couple of questions, but I I, I wonder whether somebody else wants to chip in first. So don't so don't ask a question. Okay, sorry, sure, I didn't see it. Uh, do you, you want to go ahead and... and, and... In the chat, yes. So I wonder, because you are using the... It's a very good talk, thanks. Uh, you have robot touching the wall. Uh, I just wonder, do you have four sensors to take measurement about the falls? Yes, of course, of course. We have a force ten. We have several force sensors. We have four sensors in the... Uh, ultrasound sensor in the platform of ultrasound, but also in the tip of the robot, common uh, force torque sensor, and also the force sensor in the um, crane platform. We have several uh, force sensors. Thanks. Um, anybody else? I uh, don't think I have another one on the on the chat. No. I, I do have one actually in, in the in the maybe I just step in. Um, that was one of them actually about the force sensing. Uh, but I also noticed that uh, in the first project you you have a, a stationary platform and then a moving arm. In the first project. Yes. 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 So when you're actually applying the the fix, uh, do you also anticipate to have the platform moving at the same time, or the platform will always be a stationary? No. No. Platform is uh, stationary. Okay. Uh, it's it's not it's not moving. Uh, uh, in in the second project, the platform is continuously moving to the to detect the, the defect. When the defect is detected, the platform is stopped. Yeah, I was just thinking that if you obviously if you if you are able to move the platform a little bit, you you obviously enlarge the number of degrees of freedom. It might be easier to apply the fix. Uh, in, 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 in certain scenarios, it might be easier to apply the fix if you can move back. It basically gives you more, more degrees of freedom if you can combine the base and the arm. But I have a lot of degrees of freedom, so, so, <laughs> so much, so much. I have six degrees of freedom in the robot and four degrees of freedom in the crane. Uh, I have yeah. six by four, 10 degrees. It's, it's, it's enough degrees of freedom. So, so, so many, so many. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, anybody else has got any questions? I... Okay. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Carlos. I uh, really, really appreciate it. <clears throat> so my question here is more about is about the general. <clears throat> what is the biggest challenge you have you have seen <clears throat> in terms of developing robots for real? Uh, application in this particular case is a tunnel inspection. Well, uh, uh, of course, if, if we will start in the project now, we will make it in different ways. Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 in any case, um, I think the main, the main problems that uh, we found, it's, uh, it's an in integration. In integration of mechanical system, but also in software integration, uh, sensor integration. Uh, this is this is the most uh, 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 big problem that we have during the integration. And and the second uh, big issue that we have is uh, how from uh, the um, uh, images that are uh, these images are um, uh, taken uh, from one or two meter distance. You identify uh, millimeter cracks. Okay, it means uh, the the compromise uh, between uh, the resolution of images and 
the area of view of these images. This is also a very important issue we, that, that we solve in this, in this project. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I have another question about the accuracy. I think you mentioned about the accuracy or the errors in different parts and the, the, the total accuracy can be more than 100 centimeters, but you managed to reduce it to somehow about one centimeter. So I just wonder that one centimeter, is that a kind of relative accuracy locally or something? Well, uh, all the all the reference system are local. It means we uh, uh, mm -hmm. inside the tunnel we have not a GPS. Uh, it means uh, the the uh, reference system that we use it's a local one. Okay, we we establish uh, mm -hmm. several uh, reference system on the beginning on the tunnel and probably every 15 meters we recalibrate this uh, this. Uh, uh, reference uh, system and uh, all all the uh, errors are um, reference to this uh, local references okay uh, uh, what we are what we are um, doing and I try to explain in my presentation is we know that the, we have a big error how we will reduce that the 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 procedure is to reduce the error is to divide the problem not because we have the errors of the car okay we position the the mobile uh, platform with errors uh, the train has an error the robot has an error etc and when we are uh, near the wall we know that we have an error about 10 centimeters, and we locally searching the cracks or the spalling or the defect, and then we reduce by local searching this error to one centimeter, okay? It means we position very near, near. We position the system near, but then we make a local searching, and we reduce the uh, final error to less than one centimeter. Okay, thanks. So, any further questions from anybody? Um, I got a final one if there is no other takers. Oh, Dika, do you want to shoot one? Uh, yes. Uh, <laughs> so you, I, you were ready I should have <laughs> a, a lot of child with colors. <laughs> to, exchange, yeah. to, ex to exchange ideas and the uh, strategies particularly to develop intelligent robots for real applications. We had so, both you and us, including Saras and Jaime, we had so many years of experience, but still many questions or many uh, challenges we still don't have good solutions yet. So, so it would be good if we have a chance to have a face-to-face -face chat sometime later. Uh, my another question here is that the complexity and the uncertainty of the real environment, or what we call the wide real environment. So, comparing to the live environment, live environment is much, much simpler, much, much easier. So, how is the difference between the real environment challenges um, to the live environment? How is the difference uh, addressed? from your experiments to make sure or to ensure a robot system can be used in practical applications. Yes, I agree with you, the guy that uh, uh, there are a lot of difference uh, from the lab to the real environment, a lot, a lot of difference. Uh, well, uh, we, we spend about, uh, I don't remember, but uh, three, three months uh, not 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 continuously, but in total three three months in the in the tunnel making different kind of tests. Uh, well, uh, uh, first first different. It's uh, a lot of uh, pollution, a lot of uh, dust in the in the tunnel, and this is a big problem. 
dust, uh, it's a big problem. And this is why uh, we develop a special uh, pneumatic uh, cleaning uh, system to, 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 to really, uh, if, if you have the dust in the work, you can see the, the defects, okay? And first of all, we need, we need to clean the work with the uh, pneumatic uh, iron pressure. Uh, the other uh, big difference is uh, illumination. Uh, in the lab, you have very good illumination. In the tunnel, you have a, a very poor illumination, but also the change of illumination of the running cars in, in, uh, has a big influence. When the big truck is moving, it uh, has a very powerful light, and the illumination is changed. It means we need to, we need to develop uh, algorithms uh, that are very ro robust uh, against uh, change of illumination, okay? This is the other uh, thing that we learn when we are applying the system uh, in the real tunnel. And, and, and the other um, uh, surprises that, that we have, for example, uh, inside the tunnel, uh, we are uh, this this tunnel that I show you in the in the video is a tunnel in the north of Greek. This is uh, Odos uh, uh, Highway. Uh, no connection, no Wi-Fi inside the Greek. No no GPS, no Wi-Fi, no nothing. It means you are alone, and 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 this is create. A, necessity to develop a special uh, communication infrastructure inside the town, okay? Uh, well, these this kind of things take you a lot of time, and this is the, sur the surprises, moving the robot from the lab to the real tunnel. Thank you, thank you. So this is, <laughs> yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> Anyway, I, I have to give to Heidi and uh, because the time limit here. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, uh, Carlos, we have many. We, uh, we should have many chance to discuss in the future. <laughs> yeah, Let, let's just hope that uh, the conferences come back up again face to face and we can do that. I think that we're all missing that. <laughs> yeah. So look, I, I just want to wrap up and, and really thank. Uh, Carlos in particular because I know he's got up quite early to do this for us and I appreciate that but also the content is very exciting what you guys are doing um, also managing such a big uh, such, such a project with so many partners <laughs> must be a bit of a headache so it'd be, it'd be good to learn that from you guys all right so uh, without any further ado just just thank Carlos uh, thank you very much I hope we can actually see each other soon okay. and uh, muchas gracias for uh, uh, the presentation Thanks Thank you very much, much Carlos. Much okay, see you. See you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye.